Hey everyone, it's Rich from Billet Spin. Thanks for stopping in and checking out our video. Today we're going to talk about a question that I get asked quite often, and that is how do we design and program our products? Well, I thought what better way to do that than to bring you out in the shop and show you right on my personal favorite machine here. Now, when we make our products, we use five different machines, and this just happens to be the most complex and the one that we use the most often. It's a Mazak Integrex I200, and it's a full five-axis machine. Now, what does that mean? Well, when I say five-axis, I mean this machine can move in five completely different directions, and it can do it all at the same time. What that allows us to do is anywhere from a basic design all the way up to full 3D profiling. It's a very complex machine. It's a very precise machine. This machine will move in point zero 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 one of an inch. That's the increment that it moves in. So uh, extremely precise, very fast, and uh, very, very complicated. Now, another question I get asked is how much does a machine like this cost? Well, this particular machine is the smallest of Mazak's Integrexes in the I series, the full five axis, and this machine will cost about four hundred thousand dollars. So you can see uh, there's quite an investment here in manufacturing these products. So now the next thing is when people think about design and programming, most people think of using a, a program called SolidWorks or something like that, where you can generate a three D model on a PC and or a Mac and, and actually see what the product, the end product, is going to look like before you manufacture anything. Then what they do is they take that model and they'll upload it into a CAD CAM software and it will generate what's called a toolpath. And that toolpath will be uploaded into our control. It will generate a program in G-code and they'll use that program to make the part. I don't do that here. One of the big reasons that we use Mazak is because of the style of programming Mazak uses called conversational. Now, Mazak in Mazak, you can use both G code and conversational, but I prefer conversational. It's, it's what I grew up using, and uh, so that's how we do it here. The design process for me really starts just out in everyday life. I'll see something in nature, I'll just see something as I'm walking around, some geometric pattern or shape and I'll, I'll just think, well, that would look really cool on a top or one of our other products. And so I'll, I'll kind of, in my mind, just nurture that design a little bit until it's ready to be made. And I'll come down here on our control and I'll just start a small section of program to get something made and then, and then we'll actually machine it. Then I can look at it and see and I'll add a little more to the program, run it, add a little more to the program, run it, add a little more to the program, run it, until the design is done. It's kind of like painting a picture. You, you know, you, you don't have it all at once. You just slowly, slowly add to it and add to it and add to it until finally it's all done. And that's how we do it here. And it's, yes, it is a, a long, tedious process, but that's what I found gives me the best results. Instead of trying to design it on a computer, I want to see it in real life. I want to see it come to life right out here on the machine. So that's how we do it, right or wrong, that's how I do it. What I'd like to show you next is the actual differences, because I'm sure some of you have heard of G-code programming, and I want to show you the differences between G-code and conversational programming. I hope this isn't boring, uh, it's a passion of mine, and uh, so let's get into just seeing how the programming itself works. Okay, so this would be an example of a G-code programming, and you can see there's a lot of numbers on that screen. Basically in G-code, Every single thing that you want the machine to do, whether it be a movement, whether it be turning the spindle on, um, you know, if, you, if you're going to a certain place, how do you want it to get there? How fast do you want it to get there? Do you want it to be a straight line? Do you want it to be an arc? Um, all that stuff has to be told to the control, and so you, you end up having a lot of numbers on the screen. And the problem with that is, as you can see, there's just a lot of numbers, and it makes the program extremely hard to follow. So if you have to make a change, let's say there's something wrong or you want to change a design element, you have to go back into SolidWorks, change your 3D model, upload it back into your CAD CAM, and generate a whole new toolpath, bring that toolpath back out here as a program, and it just is very, very time consuming. You can't edit on the control unless it's very basic things. 
So that's what I don't like about G-Code. This particular program is actually of a pretty easy part and you can see there's just pages and pages and pages of numbers here and uh, so yeah it's it's pretty complex it is very efficient though once you have it all proven out it's very efficient and it will be faster to make a part in g-code once it's all proven out than it will be in mazatrol so there's advantages to both now this is a g-code let's get into a mazatrol program Okay, so you can see this looks quite a bit different. In Mazatrol, what we do is, it's, is we actually draw the shape of the part. Everything two-dimensionally is, is made of dots. Connect the dots like you, like you did when you were a kid. And so in between those dots, it's either a straight line or it's an arc. And so we, we draw the shape in Mazatrol and then the machine knows exactly how to remove the material in order to end up with that particular shape. Now the program that you're looking at right here is for our GL bead that we have. This is a Damascus. Uh, this one is not etched yet and one of these videos I'm going to actually show the etching process. But this is a fairly complex part and here's our program. This part is far more complex than the G-code program that I just had up. But I'll show you how long this one is. So all those numbers I had to enter by hand in order to generate this part, but you can see this program is about a hundred times shorter than the G-code program that I had for the other part that was less complex. So that's kind of the differences between the two. That's how we do it. Uh, this particular machine, uh, I already had about 20 years experience programming before we got a machine that was similar to this and it took me about a year to really learn how to program this. So it still is complex, but it's just the, the way that I prefer to do it. I hope that answers some of your questions. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video and I hope you have a great day. Thanks.